you also have the uh, Next Generation Connectivity ETF, FIVG. That's essentially a 5G ETF. That thing's been raking in some money. I wonder if you can update us on what's going on there. I mean, we've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff going on with that. It's tier weighted. It's a little bit tough to explain, but you own a whole different groups of companies here. That's what I find very interesting out there. You own cellular networks, cell phone tower REITs in this, broadband modems, fiber cables. Uh, this is pretty elaborate for, a, for an ETF, actually. Well, we appreciate that, Bob. That was the intent of the product. What we tried to do with FIVG was capture the entire ecosystem that was going into the 5G build-out. So you are correct. Uh, Year-to-date, we're up about $400 million in assets, so the ETF has about $550 million in AUM, or assets under management. Um, And we use a four-bucket approach. What we're trying to do is ensure that we have every stock, or every stock that we possibly could, uh, that is really going into this 5G rollout. And I think that's the ultimate difficult question for investors. How do you play 5G? In our eyes, an uh, ETF like FIVG is the perfect way because we give you everything from companies that are doing the high-end routers uh, or the stuff that's actually going to the data centers. We have the mobile network operators. We have the REITs with the infrastructure play. And then we have everything down to the chip manufacturers like a Qualcomm uh, that actually goes into the cell phones or the devices that people are going to hold in their hand and actually connect to the network. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Uh, uh, Tom, any thoughts on, on this particular one? What I notice is the assets under management keep going up. Yeah. So obviously they've hit on a, a hot top topic. I guess the question is, you know, do, you, do we see other people coming into this space? Um, you know, I, I mean, Tom or Andrew, following the release of the new the 5G phone, yeah. I mean, the Apple phone, um, are, are, other, are we going to see mobile carriers actually following suit here? Or is this going to be off another two years? Well, I think that, and I'll let Andrew jump in in a second. You know, the the new iPhone is absolutely going to help this out tremendously. I, I think Paul should put them on the payroll because it's just going to do nothing but talk about 5G. Unfortunately, right now we only have 5G in 30 cities around the U.S. It's not being built out quick enough. But if you've got a uh, an Apple 12 and you can get that. 100 times speed on your phone, and you can show that to your friends, you can imagine the people are going to start talking about it. The more people talk about it, the greater demand, the greater innovation. Andrew, what would you add? Yeah, Yeah, I think we've seen, I think we've shown, and we'd all agree that in the last, you know, let's say 10 years, and then I'll add the last nine months specifically with a point. But in the last 10 years, we've seen that people are willing to pay for the best. Right. Um, you could you could call it anything you want. You could call it like I said, you're with the Peloton again. They're willing to pay up for the best. They've always been willing to pay up for Apple products because they were the best when there was plenty of, of options. The Samsung has the same technologies. Right. But people pay for the best. On top of that, I would layer that in this covid pandemic economy, people have discretionary income that they are not using to go out to dinner. You wait to see how fast that goes to 5G yeah. products. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> 